Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and today the third watch and learn in a row where we're discussing how to size a watch bracelet. So we covered the standard friction and cotter pins, we covered the Seiko pins and collars, and then in today's video, the last one, we'll cover the third, the third major bracelet, which is the folded link bracelet, which is popular on many of your Seiko 5s. Uh, it's on Orient 3 stars. It's on a lot of Casios. It's generally on your lower cost watches. Uh, there are some Orients touching $100 or so that have folded link bracelets, uh, but generally they're in your lower cost watches. Sizing them is, you know, you could take what you learned in the first watch and learn on how to size a bracelet and kind of figure it out. But there's, it's it's a little different. Um, uh, there's certainly a lot more force required, at least in my opinion. And of the three that we've done, believe it or not, this is the one that I do not like the most. Uh, I know pins and collars are on a lot of people's minds and they hate them. This is the thing that I hate because I feel that whenever I go into it, the bracelet is not going to look great when I'm done with it. You know, of course, practice makes perfect, but there's a lot of force involved. There's bending metal, uh, and you'll see when I get into it. And this is the one, again, that for me gives me the pains. And... I don't like to do it. <laughs> anyway, so before we get into the video, I'm uh, wearing obviously two watches. First one is a Scrooge McDuck Disney Store limited edition uh, that I picked up in the early 90s. Time is money. I'm a big DuckTales fan. And I'm going to do a, a video on this one soon. Uh, it'll be coming up because it's got a, a decent, decent history to it. And then uh, an Orient Bambino Generation 1. I believe this is uh, version 2. So let's take a look and find out what's up with folded link bracelets. So in front of you I have a Seiko 5 watch. It's got the folded link bracelet that we'll be sizing today. Now how do we know it's folded link? So it's pretty simple. Um, when you look at the bracelet from the side and you look at the individual links, you can see that they're not solid. See they're folded over? It's basically a piece of sheet metal that's folded onto itself and then there's a core and that core more or less is the removable pin. So when you look at one side you see that. You look at the other side you see a very similar thing but again like all the other bracelets that we've sized everything goes in one direction only. So to start sizing a watch like this the first thing that I like to do definitely now is to remove the uh, micro adjustment and open the bracelet up. It just makes it so much simpler uh, because for this you really have to get at the inside of the bracelet and if you can't get at it reliably you're gonna wind up you know messing it up. And as I said this is the bracelet that I like sizing the least oddly enough you know most people cringe at the pins and collars. This is the one that gets my vote for uh, the one I don't want to do. Just because a lot of times the links are not easy to get out it's not always elegant but you know, hopefully this one goes smooth for, uh, for the video. So I'm gonna take the micro adjustment. I'm gonna just depress the pin. This is all covered in the other watch and learns. Take it out, and now I can open the bracelet up. So we need to figure out, you know, obviously how many links we're gonna remove. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna show you how to take one out and put one in. So like before, we look at the bracelet and we see arrows. But now this time, when we look at the link, there's actually more to it. You can see there's an arrow telling us again that's the direction to push. On this end, you see this nub. It's right by the break in the folded link. And you go, okay, well maybe we have to push in this direction. It doesn't work like that. We don't push on this end. What you really need to do is you need to get this pin past this part of the link. And then the, the and then the inside comes out. It's not really a pin. It's more of a um, it's like a fastening link. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the bracelet down. I'm gonna zoom in on the area. I'm gonna take a a screwdriver. You could use anything. You know you are gonna mess up the head of the screwdriver or the tool a little bit. So you want to use something that you don't really care about. And you're gonna put it right behind right behind the head of that little pin. You can see there's a gap right here. And you're going to just push. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to push a little force into it. And there it goes. So you heard the snap. And now the link is popping out a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just take a pair of pliers. You could probably use your fingers if you went further. But pliers are a little more elegant for a video, right? So pull it out. And look at that. This like little L-shaped bracket pops out. 
So now you might think, okay, great, the bracelet just comes apart. Well, no, it doesn't. They are, the link is folded around the edge of the other link. I can't believe that these are simpler, that these are less expensive to manufacture than solid links. I mean, I guess I can, obviously. Solid links have to be cast, machined, polished, drilled, and this is just a folded piece. But look how, I mean, just look at the complex geometry here. Obviously, you know, you could, you could punch a lot of these out, and then you can bend them really fast in a tool, and then presto, instant bracelet. But still, it just looks complicated. So like, instead of like we did the other videos, I'm going to take another link out just to show you how to really remove a link. So I'm going to do it again in case you missed it. I'm going to put it right there, right behind the link, and force with my finger. I know you can't really see with my hand. I know you really couldn't see it pop, but you heard it pop. And again, this will come right out. And there it is again, another one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the link. Link is out. So let's say we're done. We just needed to remove that link. And now I'm going to take the bracelet. Put it back together like that. And then we put it back in the same exact way. And what's good about this is you can't put them in backwards, upside down, or anything. Of course, these little brackets are curved. And the nub has to point into the bracelet. So we're going to just feed it in. So now that pin is back in, or, or that, that fastening center link is back in, but it's not all the way in. So you need to push it, you, know, you, you got to push it with a decent amount of force. Um, I'm going to just use a, a block and hammer like I did in the other video, but you can use whatever you've got on hand. And it's back in. And then you could put the bracelet back together, you know, put the pin back in the end and put the micro adjustment back together. I'll do that real quick. And that's it. Bracelet's back together. It's sized. One more link is out of it. And now we can happily wear our new watch. So this has been Mark from LongAmmoWatch.com showing you how to size the folded link bracelet that's popular on many Seiko 5s, Orient 3 stars, and other you know, generally lower cost watches. If you like this video, please like it now. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do so at this time. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below, and we'll be sure to address them as soon as we can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.